How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. In my previous video titled um, Only God Can Judge Me, I brought up the fact, well it's not really, it wasn't really a fact at the time in regards to how I was addressing it, but I brought up the point about killing. And I mentioned that I would probably make a video about it. And as I slept on it and days passed, it was impressed on my spirit in my spirit to go ahead and do a follow up video because I am discerning that there were people or are people who did not understand that. And they took it in the wrong way like I was saying that it's okay to just go out here and kill, which is not what I was saying. So we want to address this thing that we see, the scriptural matter, in Exodus chapter 20, verse number 13, thou shalt not kill. It clearly says that. What you have to understand is this, Whenever there is a law or whenever there is a commandment, there are laws within that law that govern that law or that commandment. In this case, thou should not kill. So there are laws within this law that govern this law in regards to what you can, what you cannot do, what is righteous and what is unrighteous. What you will find out in the scriptures and in the sermon is that there were instances where people could kill. There were instances, there were lots of instances. And it was an actual commandment from God. To kill. So if the scriptures say thou should not kill, and then God turns around, and he tells people to kill these people, then on the surface that seems like a direct contradiction. The Bible is contradicting itself, right? I mean, yeah, if you look at it from that perspective and you um have that surface understanding, if it says thou shalt not kill. And then we clearly see other places where God tells them to kill. Then there would be a problem. So there's something more to this than we understand, or there's more to this than we have been led to understand. So walk with me as we set the foundation on this house and then we build it up so that you don't have to be confused about this anymore. Now that we have gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and get deep into the scriptures because you know how we do. We go from A to Z, zero to 100. Genesis chapter four, verses eight through 15. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So the first thing it tells us is they were talking. <sighs> Obviously there was something that Abel said that Cain did not like and made him rise up and slew his brother. <sighs> and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? God was testing him because he already knew where he was. He was seeing, was he going to tell him the truth? Because the blood was crying out from the ground. As we see in verse number 10. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. It's the same thing when you ask your children something. You already know what they've done. You're just going to see how they're going to respond. Because people are like, if God already knew what he was going to do, and he knew he had already did it because he knows everything and sees everything. Then why would he go ask him? 
The same reason you go ask your children stuff and you already know that they have done it. See how they're going to respond. How they respond is most likely how you're going to handle the situation. If they get prideful about whatever it is, then you're going to handle it accordingly. If they come to you in humility, then you're going to handle it differently. Y'all, excuse me, give me something to drink. So if y'all hear me pause and drinking, it is um, 10 o'clock at night while I'm recording this. So I am kind of parched. <laughs> Verse number 11, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So Cain didn't even have a complete understanding of what he actually did. Because now here he is crying about, you know, what you're putting on me is, you know, is greater than, than what I've done. He didn't even have a complete understanding of what he had just did. But you believe that God broke it down for him. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And notice he was driven from the face of the earth and from God's face. God wasn't going to shine his glory upon him, speak to him like that anymore. That was punishment enough. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So, Cain was cursed when he shed his brother's blood because of the laws that were already in place. But even in Cain's sin, a lot of people don't realize this. God was gracious. When God put this mark on him, this was a mark of protection. Because nobody could touch Cain. Now, why was it that Cain was afraid that he was going to be killed? Because of what he had did. Because of the laws. The laws that govern the law of killing. That's why. Because according to the law, even before the law of Moses came into place, they knew these laws. According to the law, he was supposed to be put to death. Eye for eye, tooth for a tooth. This is why he said, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me, shall kill me. They will kill me because of what I did. I shed blood. I'm, I'm, I've knocked things out of order. Think about it. Look what he did. They're not killing him. What reason would they have to kill him? The reason they would have to kill him is because what? He shed innocent blood. He shed innocent blood. So here's God's grace right here putting his mark on him and say, hey, if you kill him, then your punishment will be sevenfold. You know why? Because just as Cain was evil and wicked, they could have been evil and wicked too if they did this. And so God was trying to stop it. He was trying to prevent it from spreading. Because when they did it, then they were going to have a taste for blood. So um, we'll get deeper into it, as you will see. Now we want to um, define slay. We want to define it. To smite, strike, beat, also to kill with a weapon, slaughter. So it depends on the context it's being used in. Obviously, the context that we just read was what to kill 
he slaughtered his brother. Then we go to Webster's 1828. The proper sense is to strike. And as beating was an early mode of killing. So when it was talking about beating back in the day, they were literally talking about beat to death. When they were when they were referencing, excuse me, slay. That's where you can turn beat to death from the word slay. This word like smite came to what? Signify to kill. It seems to be formed on the root of lay, as we say to lay on. To lay on somebody. I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay upon them. Or I'm I'm gonna light upon them. To kill, to put to death by a weapon or by violence. We say he slew a man with a sword, with a stone, or with a club, or with other arms. But we never say the seraph slays a malefactor with a halter, or a man is slain on the gallows, or by poison. Because if they're... Um, slain on the gallows then it's because they have committed a crime which means that according to how it's supposed to be that they would have been tried and found guilty of that crime which the punishment being death to destroy so let's look at um slew and see what slew says it's pretty much going to say the same thing yeah, tense of, pre tense of, slate. So since we have these definitions, we have to go to the scriptures and see if these definitions line up with what we have been reading. Because Webster's is not our final authority. Etymology online is not our final authority. But they do give us wisdom in regards to understanding the deeper things of God. So we go to Genesis 18, verse 25, and it says, That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of the, all the earth do right? I just sent me a message. We go to Genesis 20, verse number four. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, without slay also a righteous nation. So the context we're seeing so far is they're asking God, hey, are you going to kill the righteous with the wicked? Why would you do that, God? For you to kill the righteous with the wicked, that wouldn't be righteous. Because if a person is wicked, then they are worthy of death because that means they have rejected the grace of God. Genesis chapter 20, verse number 11. And Abraham said, because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Now, you know, in the context, his wife was a very beautiful woman. He was afraid that they were going to kill him and then take his wife, which would have been unrighteous. Genesis 22, verse number 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son and took the knife to kill his son. Hmm. Now this is before thou shalt not kill was formally given in what we call the Ten Commandments. But the law of thou shalt not kill, the commandment of thou shalt not kill, was already in place before that. And the laws that governed it. Hmm. Interesting. Abraham is about to kill his son I thought we were not supposed to kill and we know Abraham 
is who we call the father of faith because the promises were first made to him. Interesting. Genesis chapter 27, verse number 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So why was Esau going to kill his brother? Because he hated him. And this hatred was a unrighteous hatred. You, you have a righteous hatred, according to the scriptures, and you have a unrighteous fleshly hatred. This hatred he had for Jacob was a unrighteous hatred. So this slaying of his brother would have been a unrighteous kill. Because remember, slay means pretty much to kill. To kill. Then will I kill my brother Jacob. So the intent of his heart, as it said, and Esau said in his heart, this hatred, this unrighteous hatred took root in his heart and grew up. And it was going to bear this fruit of a unrighteous kill. He was, he would not have been righteous in killing his brother because he gave of his birthright. That was his own fault. John chapter 5, verse number 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay or kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. We know they were accusing Jesus of breaking the Sabbath day and he did not. So their reason, their reason for seeking to kill him was unrighteous it, would, it was not righteous acts chapter 5 verse number 33 when they heard that they were cut and they were cut to their heart and took counsel to slay him notice where it starts at it starts in the heart it starts in the heart because they were cut in his heart cut in their heart by what he had said they wanted to kill him unrighteously acts chapter 9 verse 29 and he spake boldly in the name of the lord jesus and disputed against the grecians but they went about to slay him genesis chapter 27 verse number 42 and these words of esau her elder son were told to rebecca and she sent and called jacob her younger son and said unto him behold thy brother esau is touching thee doth comfort himself purposing to what to kill thee so we saw slay we went over those scriptures we went over enough of them and we saw also in regards to esau and jacob it said slay him and now we see it where it says to kill him he found comfort it was going to be comforting to esau excuse me to purpose in his heart to kill his brother so he was finding comfort in darkness because him wanting to kill his brother was unrighteous it was not it would not have been a righteous kill Genesis chapter 37 verses 19 through 23. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming unto his brethren that they stripped 
Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. So they were going to kill him. We know the story. And then Reuben came in and said, hey, no, let's not, let's not do that. Let's, let us not, let us not kill him. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. He said, no, let us not kill him. And um, like I said, we know the context of the story and what was going on. And them wanting to kill their brother was unrighteous. Because they were upset about the dream that he had. They were upset about the dream that he had where he was going to rule over them. And they hated that. It was a prophecy about Christ. Genesis chapter 37 verse 31 jump down and they took joseph coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood now here they are they have killed a animal and this killing of the animal was also a unrighteous kill which means they had blood on their hands either way they were still guilty Exodus chapter 1 verse number 16 and he said when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools if it be a son then ye shall kill him but if it be a daughter then she shall live this again was a unrighteous kill this would have been a unrighteous kill and we know who it was that was doing it it was still unrighteous just giving you different examples. Exodus chapter 2 verse 14. And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. So here Moses is, he has killed somebody. He has blood on his hands. He has blood on his hands. And this kill that Moses made, it was a unrighteous kill. It was a unrighteous kill because there was laws to govern this stuff and how it was supposed to be handled. But it's also a picture of something, uh, something greater. So then we go to our next set of scriptures and we pick up in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take of them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house and if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to this eating shall make your count for the lamb your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you shall take it you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Well, I thought this, the scripture say, thou shalt not kill. Of course, I'm being generic with it because somebody may read that and says, you know, you have people that believe this. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. So this includes not only man and woman, but it also includes animals. So I'm just trying to make sure I touch all bases. So if you believe that, and you claim that you believe the Bible, if you believe that animals are not supposed to be killed, and the scriptures say thou shalt not kill, here is God telling them to kill this animal, kill this lamb for what's going to be what? Passover, right? So I thought the scriptures say thou shalt not kill. Well, this was a righteous kill. This was a righteous kill. 
Remember at the beginning of the sermon, we stated that in the commandment, in the law of thou shalt not kill, you have laws that govern that. The best way I can explain it is imagine you have a headline, thou shalt not kill. And then you have your bullet points that are within the thou shalt not kill headline. And those bullet points are laws within the law and commandment of thou shalt not kill. And that bullet point may have its own set of bullet points. And then the next bullet point will have its own set of bullet points in regards to two different things. So we push forward and we go to Exodus chapter 20, verse number 13 again. And it says what? Thou shalt not kill. Okay. Exodus 21, starting in verse number one. We're going to read down. We're going to see something. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. I want to make sure I read some of this stuff because these are the laws that govern what we call slavery. And how it's supposed to be done in righteousness. I want to make sure I read it so we can flow into the points that I do want to make. If his master have given him a wife and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an au, au, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man says his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master who have betrothed her to himself, then she shall then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power seeing he had dealt deceitfully with her. I mean, that he just couldn't get her because he wanted to sleep with her and then say he don't want her and then, you know, try to sell off to uh, the heathen so they can have her way with her and, you know, he can lie about what happened. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish, meaning he shall not show favoritism um, to the other ones. And then, you know, having her not really serving a purpose, but to just, you know, bear babies and, you know, and be a, like a sex slave. And if he do not these things, these, excuse me. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smite, smiteth a man so that he dies shall be surely put to death. He that smiteth the man so that he dies shall be surely put to death. That sounds like it goes with thou shalt not kill, right? It does. But look at the context. The context is giving laws to prevent people manipulating the laws to operate in deceit. These laws were put in place to stop deceit. So the context of verse number 12 is a man smiting a man that he die is because he has purposely intended to kill him like Esau, like Cain. It wasn't righteous as you will see. So just continue to bear with me and you'll understand it that much more. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor, see, but if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, there you go right there with guile, 
thou shalt take him from my altar that he may die. This was not a righteous kill. He, he has the guile in his heart to kill him. And he that smites his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stealeth a man or selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. You see the context? This is all dealing with unrighteousness. People doing stuff in unrighteousness. So these laws protecting people. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fists, and he die not, but keepeth his bed. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. So they fighting. And then, you know what I'm saying? It gets out of control. Then he start, he pick up something to beat him. You see, back in the day, they used hands. So now he picking up something to, uh, to beat him or, you know, he, he's taking it out, outside of what it was. He's going, he's going above and beyond. The fight is over and, you know, you, you got the best of him. You're sitting there, you just pummeling him. The best way I can describe it so you can easily understand it. Because you see they're striving together. So they they were they were um you know pretty much arguing and then one of them got mad or whatever. So he should have just walked away or tried to reconcile, you know, and try to work it out. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day. Or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. Some people don't like that, but hey, it is what it is. You got to understand what was going on back then. And the same thing is going on today is just, they just, uh, they mask it. Many people are um, other people's money. Verse 22, if men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart, from her and yet no mischief follow he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him and he shall pay as the judges determine and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life so if it gets worse then okay you don't want to pay the money then okay life for life then eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot Burning for born, burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And this is what it was back in the day. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. You got to remember that a lot of these people, they were... Um, in these positions, man servants and maid servants, because they put themselves there or their family put them there for protection or whatnot, because they wanted to be under Israel. So God put these laws in place to make sure that they were taken care of too and not treated any type of way. But he did, he wouldn't have to did do this if Israel would have been doing what they're supposed to do. But we know the law came in to, um, so everybody could be found guilty under sin. So grace could be available to everybody. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they died, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten. But the owner of the, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past. And it have been testified to his owner. And he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. Meaning that if the ox just just went out, escaped, got went went crazy or whatever, and he killed somebody, then the ox is gonna be killed, and then the um um the owner is good to go. 
But if the owner knew that this ox was like this and he escaped and then he killed somebody, then it's just as if that owner did it because he knew this ox was all uh, wild. In the same way you have dogs. Um, you have dogs that be in people's yards and dog may escape and bite somebody and the owner knew that this dog was the way that it was that this dog needed to be kept in away from people so the owner is now responsible so back then the owner would have been put to death too because life for life right so what happened was israel got away from um these laws, they were not keeping them in righteousness. They were just doing what they wanted to do and showing favoritism because oh, we Israel, so we can do what we want to. And they were having no mercy. Genesis chapter nine, verses five and six. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. So this is why God was saying, thou shalt not kill. Because man was made in the image of God. For well, the image of God was the image of Christ. Which is what? Love. So the image of God in which he made man in it is the image of love. So therefore, if a person was walking in righteousness, doing what they're supposed to be doing, and their blood was shed, hey, this was, this was innocent blood that was shed. So the person that shed the blood needed to be held accountable for that because if the person the person if the person that was um if the person that shed his uh shed another man's blood if they were walking in righteousness and the person's blood they shed were walking in righteousness then guess what that blood would have never been shed so now we go to Leviticus chapter 24, verses 19 through 22. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. You shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. For I am the Lord your God. So we've seen that God is saying, hey, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. You shed blood, your blood gets shed. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Then we go to Numbers 35 and it says, starting in verse number one. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts and the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about and ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits and on the south side two thousand cubits and on the west side two thousand cubits and on the north side two thousand cubits and the city shall be in the midst this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. Verse number um, six. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be 
six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. Hmm. So they have this structure, this uh these cities set up, these suburbs set up a certain way, and each section served served a specific uh part. And so you had six cities that were for refuge of people of Israel that could come here, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer. These manslayers could come here and be under the protection. It's like being extradited um, in this place, in these places. Verse number seven. So all the cities which ye, sh which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall, them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many ye shall give many. But from them that have few ye shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to to his inheritance which he inherited. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan to the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint your cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. So, again, these cities, uh, well, these, um, right here, these six cities for refuge were, were for the, um, children of Israel that had killed somebody where well, they could come here and be protected. Like if they were out somewhere or whatnot and somebody was hunting them down, they could come here and be protected so they could be tried under the law of the Israelites and not, you know what I'm saying, under the law of somebody else or whatnot. So then we go to verse number 12. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until what? Until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. And ye shall give three cities on this side Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for a refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So here God is saying that, hey, once you try them, these people have, who have committed this, and you find them guilty, then guess what? They're guilty of murder. They will be put to death. I thought, God said, thou shalt not kill. And if he smite him with throwing a stone wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So now he's giving you the context. He's giving you more context in regards to what murder is and everything. And thou shalt not kill. Then we go to verse number 18. Or if he smite him with an hand weapon of wood wherewith he may die and he die he is a murderer the murderer shall surely be put to death the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him he shall slay him hmm but if he thrusts him of hatred or hurl at him by laying away that he die or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. Wow. 
the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him he shall slay him okay but if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying a weight that he die or in enmity smite him with his hand enmity you know about that that he die he that smote him shall surely be put to death for he's a murderer the revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him thought god said thou shalt not kill so what happens is this person who is guilt, already guilty of murder they know the revenger of blood is after them so what they'll do is because they don't want to die because they know that they are supposed to be put to death because they have killed a person unrighteously and they don't want to even go to court uh prove their case or you know saying find, find out if they're guilty or not guilty so they will lie and wait to kill the revenger of blood so now that now they, they've committed double murder because they were already a murderer now they've committed double murder and then sometimes you will have the revenger of blood who would do things unrighteously and then somebody would be after them a bounty that's thank you lord a bounty would be on them that's the right word i was looking for kind of like a bounty um where we at where we at verse 22 but if he thrusts him suddenly without enmity or cast upon him anything without laying a weight or with any stone wherewith a man may die seeing him not and cast it upon him that he die and was not his enemy neither sought his harm then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments so that kind of like goes in um detail in regards to what i was just explaining so the congregation is going to judge between the two of them about who's really guilty and what's really going on so now the congregation is judging between the two of them to find out what's going on let's get deeper with it and the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood remember i was saying the revenger of blood sometimes they would take um their their vengeance would be fleshly and not done in the righteous way so they would be in this position but then now they're doing it in unrighteousness it's kind of like a person that's that let's say like a a nurse is um now that might not be a good example let's say like a warden a warden a warden um is executing people or pushing pe for people's execution that he may know that they are guilty and he may not know that they are not guilty and they are trying to have an appeal to prove because let's say new technology or new information has come out that can exonerate them from their charges because they make money off of all this stuff what the warden would do is find a way to make sure that this person is executed and that they don't get their appeal now what he has done is unrighteous by denying this person their final appeal that they're trying to get before they are put to death because of his own wicked heart so sometimes the revenger of blood um he would get beside himself out of line out of pocket and so you would have this situation where the congregation would judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood and the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood the slayer was the original person that committed murder and the revenger of blood was the one that was um trying to get this person that killed somebody and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge whether 
whither he was fled and he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest which was anointed with the holy oil but if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of its refuge whether he was fled and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge the revenger of blood shall kill the slayer he shall not be guilty of blood so if the revenger of blood came into these cities and he found him if he killed him within these cities or he tried to kill him if he killed him of course he was he was guilty because he couldn't do it in do it in a city like that it had to be brought before the courts first but if he came in there he was laying in wait and he got caught doing it then they brought the then they brought it before the congregation of israel the judges now the slayer went outside of the city this was the person that originally did the murder and the avenger revenger of blood caught him outside of the uh, right here and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge if he's outside that that protection and the revenger gets him he should not be guilty of blood because that's outside of their jurisdiction as we say why because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest but after the death of the high priest the slayer shall return into the land of his possession and this is all dealing with hey, if he got caught if the slayer and the revenger of blood they were brought both brought forth because the revenger of blood was trying to get him unrighteously then the revenger of blood had to go and then pretty much the the uh, slayer was going to beat the charges he was going to beat the charges because of revenge of blood he knew better so it was just you know laws governing all this um killing and stuff like that so it could be done in righteousness um then we go to verse number 29 so these things shall be for a statue of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings whoso killeth any person the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses this is what's supposed how it's supposed to go down but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die not bearing false witness moreover ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death see he was found guilty of it he shall but he shall but he shall be surely put to death and ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge that he should come again to dwell in the land unto the death of the priest meaning like you can't come around these parts so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it defile not therefore the land in which ye shall inhabit wherein i dwell for i the lord dwell among the children of israel so this is why when christ comes back he's going to shed the blood of his enemies because they have shed blood unrighteously unrighteously and why the land cannot be, be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it so that gives you a deeper understanding of why christ is coming back to slaughter his enemies so the scriptures clearly say thou shalt not kill but then you have laws governing the killing of people thou shalt not kill unrighteously deuteronomy chapter 19 verses 9 through 13 if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them which i command thee this day to love the lord thy god and to walk ever in his ways then shalt thou add three cities more for thee beside these three why the innocent blood be not shed in thy land 
which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally that he die, and fleeth unto one of these cities, so now he's giving us some deeper context, then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eyes shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. So this just explained and expounded on what we just read. But if any man hates his neighbor, again, this is a unrighteous hatred. This is like what Cain did to his brother. And this is like what Esau wanted to do to his brother. If any man hate his neighbor and lie and wait for him, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And you sitting there, you plotting, as we say, what we call uh, premeditated murder. And rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and flee unto one of these cities. Then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood. Why? That he may die. So who was delivering him so he can die? The elders. Why? Because he killed somebody unrighteously. Well, I thought the Bible said thou should not kill though. Hopefully we're starting to understand. Second Samuel chapter 12 verses 7 through 10. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel. I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword will never excuse me, now, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Now what was wrong with what he had did? What was wrong with what David had did? He had killed a man un righteously out of covetousness he was not walking in the law of love love your neighbor you love yourself and god told him that hey if what i gave you wasn't enough i would have gave you gave you even more so that you could be satisfied and you went and did this so david was guilty of a unrighteous kill he was guilty of killing a man unrighteously in wickedness for his own gain. When God said what? And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Second Kings 21 verse 16. Moreover, Manasseh shed what innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. What did he do? He shed innocent blood. Uriah, the Hittite, that was the shedding of innocent blood because Uriah hadn't done anything. Uriah was so faithful to David. She must have been a bad looking chick. <laughs> Super bad. Psalms chapter 10 verses 1 through 11. Why standest, standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desires 
the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Remember we read that earlier? He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth, he doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself. The poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He hideth his face. He will never see it. So that's what it's talking about. Thou shalt not kill. This unrighteous killing. Oh, God ain't going to see me do this evil, wicked thing. Because God has forgotten this world. He's not watching. He, hide, he has hid his face. So he doesn't know what's going on. But we forgot that the, God's eyes are on the righteous. So why was he doing this? For the wicked boasteth in his heart's desires and blesseth the covetous. I'm going to go get this from the poor. I'm going to go take their life so I can get what they got. Because they're weak. Proverbs chapter 1 verses 10 through 13. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with, the, come, excuse me, come with us and let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Without cause. Thou shalt not kill without cause. If somebody breaks in your house and you get into a tussle and that person happens to die in the midst of that tussle, that's with the cause. You know? If your husband or wife is sleeping around and you hear you reading text messages and and um the voicemails and everything and you know they talk about how they hate you, they never wish they married you and this and that, this and that. And you know, this is from your own spouse. But then you kill the person that your spouse is cheating with and you let your spouse live that's unrighteous all the way around because technically both of them were supposed to be put to death for what they have done so now she she or him will going to beat, beat the charges or whatever of adultery because of what you've done so um and continue on in verse number 12 let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit let's treat them just as just as us that's, you know that's why the bible said do unto others as you have done unto yourself that's why the wicked do wicked to other other people because they want wickedness done to them inwardly we shall find all precious substance we shall fill our houses with spoil let's take advantage of these people Jeremiah chapter 26 verse 15 But know ye for certain that if ye put me to death ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon the inhabitants thereof for of a truth the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears So why was he warning them um about killing him because he was innocent. So it would have been a unrighteous kill. 
according to the very law that they said they believed. Exodus chapter 29, verse number 11. And thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Thou shalt kill. This is a righteous kill because these sacrifices are, well, excuse me, this, uh, this killing of the bullock is for the sacrifices. So this is in righteousness according to the law and how it was supposed to be done. Leviticus chapter 17 verses 1 through 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or that killeth it out of the camp, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto that man, he hath shed blood. And that man shall be cut off from among his people. So, even in regards to animals, even in regards to animals, if they if it wasn't done the way it was supposed to be done, what? Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He have shed blood. He have committed murder, just as he, just as he's committed murder. Why? Because they didn't do it the way it was supposed to be done. So all these people that are um, talking about they're keeping these laws right here. We're keeping the law. We're keeping the Old Testament law. But you ain't doing this. And then you sacrificing animals or whatnot. You're a murderer. It's just as if you committed murder. Blood has been imputed unto you. And then if you are talking about you're keeping the 613 laws of Moses. If you're keeping... You're talking about you're keeping the law of Moses and you're not keeping it the way it's supposed to be kept by sacrificing uh, an ox or a lamb or goat in the camp where it was supposed to be at in Israel. If you're not doing that, then you're still guilty. Uh, verse number five. To the end that the children of Israel might, excuse me, to the end that the children of Israel, Israel, <laughs> may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field even that they may bring them unto the lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priests and offer them for peace offerings unto the lord so you just couldn't do it in the open field you had to do it how it was supposed to be done according to this law and the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and burn the fat for a sweet savior unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer the sacrifices unto devils. So if you are, if you were doing this in the open field, it was doing it unto devils. After whom they have gone a whoring. So they were taking the things of God and they were applying them to devils doing them to devils. This shall be a statue forever unto them throughout their generations. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 16 through 18. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. Well, hold on. I thought God said thou should not kill. Thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. Oh, hold on. I thought God clearly said that it clearly says thou shalt not kill. That's the end of it. No killing. Doesn't matter. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. Well, hold on. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. So thou shalt not kill means thou shalt not kill so we should not be killing anybody for any reason they should not have been killing this woman for laying down with the beast 
They should not, they should not have been doing it because God said, thou shalt not kill. God said, judge not, lest ye be judged. So we're not supposed to be doing any judging, right? Now you're starting to, now you really should understand. As I said earlier, you have thou shalt not kill as the headline. Within that law or that commandment, whichever term you want to use, you had laws that governed the law of thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. It shall not be a unrighteous kill. Thou shalt not kill. These are the laws to govern killing. So when God is saying thou shalt not kill, speaking about not killing in unrighteousness because obviously if god is righteous and he gave the law of thou shalt not kill but he tells him to turn around and kill then that must mean that it was a righteous kill which means it wasn't murder because that person was already dead from what they did so now it had to be exacted out it had to be physically done what they had spiritually done had to be now repaid. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So could they kill? Yes. In righteousness, according to the laws that govern the law of killing. They couldn't murder. Which is God, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. Because obviously they're killing right here. <laughs> and if any man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness, he shall bear his inequity. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness, he hath discovered her fountain, and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among, from among their people. This is talking about um, a man sleeping with a woman on, on her period, not supposed to do it. Yes, the Bible does cover things like that. The Bible covers everything. Numbers chapter 31, verses 15 through 17. And Moses said unto them, have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that have known man by lying with him. Now, here is Moses telling them to do this. Did God punish Moses for that? No, because it was a righteous kill. It was not murder. <clears throat> it was not murder. <clears throat> oh, that water good. So why was it a righteous kill? He, told, he tells you in verse number 16. Behold. These caused the children of Israel through the council of Balaam, which is pretty much Satan, to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Take them out. They're worthy of death. It was a righteous kill. But I thought he said, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> but here Moses is now, therefore kill. Deuteronomy 13, one of my favorite scriptures. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God proveth you what they said came to pass 
but they're telling you to go worship other gods. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Same thing is going on today. So many people are being bamboozled by these false prophets. They're false prophets because they're leading you away from Jesus, even though they gave a prophecy and it came to pass. Why? For the Lord your God proveth you. These dreamers, they gave you a dream and a dream came to pass, but they're leading you away from the true Messiah to worship other gods. Why? For the Lord your God proveth you. They gave a sign or a wonder and it came to pass. And you are amazed and they're telling you other ways. Go, let's go worship these gods. Why is it happening? For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. It's going on so much. Today it's ridiculous. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. I thought I thought I thought God said thou shalt not kill. Why? Because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. So he's worthy of death. So this would be a righteous kill. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Where was it at? It was in the midst. Put them out. Death. Put them to death. Verse number six, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, far off from thee from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards, the hands of all the people. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. But thou shalt surely kill him. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. To put him to death. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. And afterwards the hand of all the people. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. God, God said the same thing in the New Testament too. If you love mother. Father sister brother friend your own soul more than me you are not worthy of me and if you are not worthy of christ that means that you are worthy of death how deep you want to go how deep you want to go now i know somebody's probably saying well you saying we're supposed to be killing people today we, we can righteously kill people like because they're worshiping other gods that's not what i'm saying we'll get to that you will get to that. Verse number 10. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. That he what? That he die. Because he hath what? Sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You ain't supposed to show these people no mercy. Even today, these false prophets, you ain't supposed to be showing them no mercy. You're not going out and killing them, but you're not supposed to be showing these false prophets no mercy, no matter who they are, no matter if it's your brother, your mother, your son, your daughter, your wife, your friend, your uh, earthly father, auntie, uncle, cousin, second cousin, third cousin, whoever. 
you're not supposed to be showing them no mercy. He says, neither shall thine eye pity him. Neither shalt thou spare. Neither shalt thou conceal him. We're not supposed to conceal him even in the New Testament. You're supposed to expose him. That's what the Bible says. Reprove, reprove. You know? Exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. Not make a covering for them. Verse number 11. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Then we go down some. Um, verse number 12. If thou shalt hear, if thou shalt hear say in one of the of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn, excuse me, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently. And behold, if it be true and a thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly and all that is therein and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. Hmm. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof and shalt burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof every whit for the Lord thy God and it shall be in heap forever. It shall not be built again. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. But he just said, you know what I'm saying, if they um doing this stuff pulling people away to worship satan worship these false gods they're worthy of death so do what thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword destroying it utterly and all that is therein i thought god said thou shalt not kill hey i ain't i guess god just just directly contradicted himself So then we go to our next set of scriptures. This will be our last set. And then we will have a, a deeper understanding on top of what we already understand. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1, 2, and 3. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up you think solomon was talking about a murderous unrighteous kill no no but he clearly said there's a time to kill which would which would contradict thou should not kill <laughs> isaiah 66 verses 1 2 and 3 thus saith the lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool where is the house that ye build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things have mine hand made, and all those things have been, ha, excuse me, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Many people don't tremble at the word of God. He that killeth an ox is as, is as, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. 
he that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yeah, yea. They have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. So they took the very things of God, and what? They were doing them in unrighteousness. They were taking oxes, and they were, it was just as if they were killing a, a man. In their heart, they were killing a man. And they're offering, offering, excuse me, offering it to God. They were taking a, a, a lamb that they were sacrificing. And they were treating it like it was a dog's neck. They were cutting off a dog's neck. Just wicked. Which is why you have thou shalt not kill. This would have applied to them, their wickedness. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 8. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Now you understand why a person is worthy of death. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Uh-oh, bow down to him, worshiping him. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was, ki was kindled against Israel. Didn't we just read something about this earlier? And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Hold, hold on. Hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. God just told Moses to take all the heads of these people that were doing this and hang them, hang their heads up before the Lord against the sun. Which means that if their head is hanging on a stake, they were killed. But I thought God said thou should not kill. So why in the world would God say thou should not kill? Then he turns around and tells Moses to kill them. That doesn't make any sense, right? Well, it should make sense to you now. It should make sense. If it doesn't make sense to you after, you know, we've covered what we covered, then I don't know what to tell you. The context of thou shalt not kill. You have laws that govern that. You could not do a unrighteous kill. You could not kill from your flesh. Because you had an unrighteous hatred or whatever. That would be murder. But if a person was already dead because of something they did, then they were back then they were supposed to be taken out because they were already dead because of the, of the crime they committed so what they did by bowing down offering sacrifices to these uh gods of moab and eating have eaten at these feasts to their gods and worshiping these gods worshiping these devils they were already dead because they had broken the very law that God had given them, which said that they were supposed to be put to death for doing that. So then it was played out by them being killed, which was a righteous kill. That's why Jesus said that he didn't come to condemn, uh, condemn man. Why? Because the person's already condemned if they don't believe. So then it comes a point in time in the future where they are literally put to death because of them continually worshiping other gods. Right now it's just, you have God's grace. It's not done immediately like it was back then. It's done differently under the law of love because you have to have mercy. Back then there was no mercy. That's what the scriptures tell us in the New Testament. He's given them mercy to come to repentance. But many people, they're not. So, hey, it is what it is. 
and Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay, er, slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Pure. Didn't we define slay earlier? Kill ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Pure. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. <laughs> and behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. He killed them. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. Watch this. So that the so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel, and you go read the rest of it. God said he was pleased with it. It pleased him that he had gave he had gave him a blessing. We we discussed that in our previous um previous video. Uh the one only God can judge me. Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shido Shedo Lamar Lamir <laughs> and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. Here's Abraham. Abraham went out and he slaughtered them. <laughs> he slaughtered them. Which, are you going to say that Abraham killing them was unrighteous? You can say that, but I would be careful. Now you're bearing false witness. Joshua chapter 10, verse number 20. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a what very great slaughter i thought god said thou shalt not kill and it came to pass when joshua and the children of israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter i thought god said thou shalt not kill till they were consumed i thought god said thou shalt not kill that the rest which remain of them entered into fence cities. Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse number five. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him. I thought God said, Thou shalt not kill. Yet here God is delivering him into his hand. For them to kill him and carried away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to damascus and he was also delivered into the hand of the king of israel who smote him with a great slaughter i thought god said thou shalt not kill so did god contradict himself no he didn't now you understand that much more but let's push for it Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. I thought God said thou shalt not kill. So, is God contradicting himself? He just, he don't know what he want. He tells not to kill, then he tells the people to kill. He delivers the people, he delivers the people into the hand for his own people to kill him. And he told them not to kill. Like, who can understand these things? <laughs> those who are in the spirit. That's who can understand these things. He does spiritual judges of all things, yet he is judge of no man. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. If you can't understand, it's because you're walking in the flesh. All you see is, thou shall not kill. Oh, See, can't kill. But then somebody breaking your house and 
raping your wife, then you didn't kill somebody because they raping your wife or raping your child. Oh, I, I thought I thought you couldn't kill. So now you're guilty of the very thing you could you've condemned yourself. Same people that I should not kill that don't even have an understanding standing of it. These are the same people that support America and what and what America does in regards to killing other people unrighteously. <laughs> oh, I hit a nerve right there, didn't I? We got to stop preaching stuff we don't understand and stop speaking speaking against stuff we don't understand. Especially this. Now we have an understanding of it. So let's uh, live, learn, and grow. Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Then we jump down to verse number 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. I thought God said thou should not kill. They shall stone them with stones. I thought God said thou should not kill. Their blood shall be upon them. Why? Because they were already guilty for what they had done. This is just the icing on the cake. The the killing of them they were already dead when they did what they did spiritually so this is a righteous kill it's not murder like cain or what esau wanted to do or even what satan did so say so he was a murderer from the beginning he walked outside the laws and did stuff that he wasn't supposed to do by manipulating the law <laughs> So then we go to Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 9. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in these saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are the Ten Commandments right there. They're the Ten Commandments. And if there be any other commandment, it's fulfilled in what? Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Because if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're not going to murder him. If your neighbor loves you, he ain't going to murder you. So he ain't going to have no reason to come at you, to try to kill you. So it disannuls this law because there's no need for it because you're walking in love and loving your neighbor loving your neighbor as yourself and they are walking in this commandment and they are loving you as they love themselves so therefore you cannot be guilty neither one of you can be guilty of any of this because you are both loving you, your neighbor loving each other as yourself so there's no reason for a commandment of thou shalt not kill. Because how are you going to kill him? How are you going to murder him? If he's walking in love and you're walking in love. You can't. <laughs> you can't. You have no reason to have hatred, unrighteous hatred rise up in your heart to kill, to kill your neighbor. Because your neighbor's walking in love, showing you nothing but love and you're showing him love. Nothing but love, true love. Oh, we get it now. We get it. We get it. So this is how all this is fulfilled in this commandment. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 25. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, 
and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, and shall not, excuse me, inherit the spiritual kingdom. They won't. They won't be born again. They will. They will not receive the spirit. <laughs> excuse me, but the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of you being born again, is what love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against. Such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So, if you're bringing forth this fruit, then you're not going to be bringing forth the fruit of murder against such there is no law. There is no law of thou shalt not kill. Why? Because you're bringing forth this fruit. Why would you want to kill somebody? Why would you want to murder somebody? when they ain't did nothing to you and you ain't did nothing to them simple people complicate this or maybe they're complicated and given over to confusion because they don't truly want to know the truth they want to do things their way first timothy chapter 1 verse number 9 knowing this that the law old testament law is not made for a righteous man our righteousness comes from Christ. So we are righteous men and righteous women through Christ and his gospel. But for the lawless and disobedient, ain't it funny that the very ones who claim that us Christians are lawless, they are actually the ones who are lawless because they have the law. They're under the law. And that's why they that's why they are under the law because they are lawless and disobedient <laughs> but they call us lawless because we talk about god's grace oh see talking about god's grace and you know you just think believe then you can just do what you want to any christian anybody that profess to be a christian but that's saying that they're not a christian they're either confused or they ain't no christian <laughs> For the ungodly and for and for sinners, for unholy and profane, will God say, "Be ye holy, because He is holy." Well, how do we be holy? Through Christ, by being born again, Him giving us His Spirit, repent and believe the gospel. For murderers, for murderers, they kill without a cause. They kill with their unrighteous hatred in their heart. Not only they physically do it, they do it with their words. Oh, a lot of y'all got blood in your hands that are listening to this video right now because you have killed people with your words unrighteously, slandering them. You have bare false witness for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. Manslayers, didn't we read about that earlier? You the revenger of blood now. And you lying in wait, trying to kill the slayer. Now you're a man. Now you're a man slayer. You want to kill this person so bad that you're just burning up. You're gonna find any way to get them. Anyway, you're you're consumed by it. Instead of just letting vengeance happen, because God brings vengeance. James chapter two verses nine through twelve. But if ye have respect to persons, which is what they end up doing back in the Old Testament, they end up having respect to persons and they were not judging righteously. They were just killing people that um, they felt like they wanted to kill. Kind of like with the woman that was caught in adultery. And they tried to come at Jesus. And according to the law, the man and the woman were supposed to be brought before judgment, but they only brought the woman. They were having respect to persons, which means they were guilty because they were going to put this woman to death, but then they weren't going to put the man to death. So they were just as guilty as if they had done it, which means they had blood on their hands because they they were not doing it, taking it out according to how the law said it was supposed to be done. So they were guilty of, thou shalt not kill. They were guilty of murdering. They were guilty of committing murder because it was unrighteous in regards to what they had, well, what they were trying to do and what many of them did back in the day. Ye commit sin and are convinced of the law. But if ye have respect to persons, 
ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So even even when they do this, the, the law them the law itself is showing and telling them that they are um transgressors of the very law that they claim they're keeping. <laughs> For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. This is the law that we are under in Christ. We are under the law of liberty. If we are under the law of liberty, that means that there are laws in liberty that govern how we live in that law of freedom, liberty. Not just we can do whatever the hell we want to do. That's foolish. Pure foolishness. So there are also in in the law of liberty, you have laws that govern how you're supposed to eat, what you can drink and all these different things. Not that you can just eat whatever you want to, whatever you want to, whenever you want to. And hey, I'm saved by God's grace, so I'm good to go. I'm going to heaven. You sitting there eating snack cakes and Twinkies all day. You ain't eating no food with no substance. People talk about, oh man, that swine, man, eating that pig and stuff. Yeah, man, get them, get them, man. But then the 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 chicken today is is just as bad as the, uh, the pig today. They don't want to talk about that though. They got the rice now where they have, um, they have put human DNA in it. They don't want to talk about that though. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that though. So you can think you're eating healthy and then not really even be eating healthy. That's why you have the power of prayer. You can, you can be in sin in regards to eating anything. You can be in sin in regards to, you know, drink with water. If you're doing it unrighteously, <laughs> that's for another discussion. Let's push forward. First John chapter three, verse number 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. There you go right there. Thou shalt not kill. Why did he kill his brother? Why did he murder his brother? because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Why do they want to murder us today? Because our works in Christ are righteous. We preach the word of God and they hate it. And so they want to murder us. And it's because they have committed murder with their words and even physically doing it. They will be judged by that very law because they are under that law. But we're not under this law. We're under the law of liberty. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Then we close out with this set of scriptures, I think. Oh, we got uh, two more, I think. Yeah, two more sets. Matthew chapter five, verse 18 through 23. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise, no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least, one of these least commandments, y'all excuse me, it's kind of late, and shall teach men also, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed 
the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what's he doing? He said, okay, if you're going to teach this, then if you're teaching people to break it, then you're guilty of it. Because remember, if you, if you're bound by this, then you got to do all of it. Then he says that your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees, they claim they were doing this. They claim they were keeping the commandments, right? Verse of 21, which is why he goes in and he says this. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? We discussed it earlier because they were killing, which was murder. They were killing without a cause. Thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Why would they have been in danger of the judgment if they killed? Because they were, they did it without a cause. Because we saw all the examples where God told them to kill. It was with a cause. It was in righteousness. And then we saw the others that were doing it and they were doing it without a cause. They were doing it in unrighteousness. So that's why Christ says that whosoever is, is angry with his brother without a cause, because the anger leads to what? He said that be ye angry and sin not. The anger turns to wrath, which turns to the murder the unrighteous murder, killing without a cause. That's why he said that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment because it's just as if you killed him. You already killed him in your heart. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother have aught against thee. They said, leave your altar, leave your gift there, and then go, go make it right with your brother. Go make it right with your brother. That's what he's saying. So then you had to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about being guilty of uh, killing him because you didn't let your anger become sin. You were mad at him. You went to him. You let him know why you were angry at him. And then y'all reconciled. Because he don't want you trying to, he don't want you, you, excuse me, he don't want you chasing him trying to kill him. Because then he's going to come back and try to kill you probably. <laughs> now, what do you get with that? So then we close with Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. And this is how we handle it today in the spiritual. This is why we're not going around killing people right now. We're fighting against spirits. But there will, there will come a time very near in the future when we come back with Christ. When Christ comes to slay, to kill his enemies and it will be 100% righteous, we will be with him and have the authority to do that. And we will not be guilty because it will be in 100% righteousness according to the law that they are guilty of because they are under that Old Testament law. <laughs> because if you're not in Christ and you're not truly born again, then you are under the curse of the Old Testament law, rather you are Jew or Gentile. It's as simple as that. So therefore, if you're under it, then you suffer the consequences of being under it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Because right now we're fighting a spiritual war. We're fighting spirits. All flesh is wicked and corrupt. So this is why we're not going around and killing people for worshiping gods and stuff like that. We're going after the gods themselves. We're going after the gods themselves, not the people. 
Now, if the people continue in that, then they suffer the same consequences. They have went after our God. So now we are going after their gods. They have went after God's people. So now we're going after their people by going after their gods. This is how it is handled today. So with that being said, I hope that gave you an understanding of what we discussed in the previous video. And if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, please go back and watch it. It's titled Only God Can Judge Me. Uh, it's you know, pretty good if I don't say so myself in regards to you know, that meal that we had uh, whipped up for y'all. Um, but if you haven't watched it and you just watched this one, I'm pretty sure you got something from this and you got a better understanding, a deeper understanding. And um, the confusion is gone. The confusion is gone. So go study this out for yourself. Continue to build on it. Bring forth fruit in the spirit. And again, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated. It is declared. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it was edifying to you, be sure to do your part and share it on all your social media outlets, websites, and forums. Your help is greatly appreciated to help fight this war and reach lost souls. Don't forget to like, dislike, and or subscribe. Be sure to also check out our website, stayingfocusedforjesus.life and make sure you check out that resource section, which has a lot of videos that I share and some other stuff, books, um, documents, PDF websites, many, many things, and it's growing daily as I add to it. Also follow us on Facebook for even more content. Staying focused for Jesus on Facebook. Thanks for waking up with us.